Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to King Win Pro League 2015, week nine. We're going on to the last week. This is the first of two days. Tomorrow is going to be the second day of the, the the ninth week. This is going to the playoffs, essentially. And this is especially true when you look at the next match that we have up. It's going to be Show versus Strife Crow. Both of them are currently in the top three of their respective group. Strife Crow is first, um, which this means... This is an important match for both. Exactly. If Strife Crow wins this, he's going to go directly to the semifinals. But if Sho wins this, he's going to take Strife Crow's spot uh, to go to the semifinals directly. Usually they have to, you know, second and third place end up in the quarterfinals. But going through the semifinals means you have one less match, which reduces the amount of variance you have to go through in order to get to the grand, grand finals. So that's a really big deal. Uh, Sho wants to win this, obviously, and Strife Crow wants to maintain his position. Even if he stays in the top three, he still wants to secure his semifinal spot. True. Nothing to add here. Like <laughs> it's um it's a very important match for all balls of players and they will be try harding. Yeah. As, as far as, as I can tell. Yeah. And it's like uh the this is the biggest match for both of those players from the whole season. Yeah, I mean, it usually, like, we, we talked about that before in the early, earlier part of the league. The later you go on, the more important the tiebreakers become. Yeah. Um, and Sho's current tiebreaker is equal to Strife Crow, mm -hmm. which means whoever wins this is going to definitely take the spot upwards. Yep. Whereas if that hadn't been the case, and let's say Strife Crow's score was a bit different, uh, if his tiebreaker was much, much higher, then maybe Sho would only get second place. But in this case, it would actually swap uh, places because Sho's tiebreaker will increase if he wins this, thus taking the spot over Strife Crow. So the tiebreaker is, in fact, a really huge deal in this specific match. Yeah. I'm kind of sad that no one in the league ended up with a XOX1 result, you know? You mean no, no mean losses? With no yeah. losses or just one loss? Well, like, Strive Crow and Life Coach were really, really close uh, for the longest time. I think yeah. it was. It came down to like one specific week where both of them got a loss. Mm -hmm. So that was the only thing. But both of them were really close to getting that near perfect score. To be honest, I hope that will be the case in the next season. That somebody like, just goes like straight yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I just want to you know the the story of a of a player that will go undefeated in the whole league. That would be like so insane. Yeah, but I think like even if you play nearly perfectly, um, draws will sometimes not line up your way. Like even because if you're getting a six-two in a league like this, let's say, and you, your end result is in fact a six-two, like life coaches, it means mm -hmm. you've played really, really well. A seventy-five percent win rate in something like Hearthstone over a long league period with a you know dynamic and shifting metagame—that's a really big accomplishment. Yeah, and also when you have to read your opponents, because you know your opponents each week, yeah, week so you, you prepare for a specific type of player. Yeah. If you think really about it, next season, when the open qualified players will be introduced to the um, uh, to the bracket, it will be kind of harder for the players. Right, because they don't have information on those, you know, no names, so to speak. You don't have any information yeah. of people who uh, you haven't played with very often. You know, you know by now that... Um, life coach favors handlock, so you will build a deck that tends to counter handlock at the very least. Or you'll build a lineup that's at least strong against that one deck in a conquest format. But if you're facing off against a player you'd have no information about, that's a really huge difference. True. And this will make the next season even more interesting, I would say. Yeah, I, I really can't wait to see how many of the names that are currently in the season that are going to get knocked out, that are in the bottom five of each group, are going to qualify back to the open qualifier. That's what I really want to see uh, next season. You mentioned you wouldn't Me be surprised if you saw about six to seven names, perhaps, that yeah. we know in the community just come back uh, as a result of their consistency, but... I don't know. We'll have to see. I mean, a lot of people do complain about the lack of open qualifiers, but it's become increasingly popular as a format right now to get people uh, to open qualifiers for the BlizzCon. Well, um, we had we have so much events. In, in, in example, in April, we had so much events that had qualifiers in it. That it's really insane. And next uh, month, we have Via Game House Cup, I, if I yeah, uh, recall yeah, correctly. Yeah. So that's, um, again, like two open qualifiers and also a big deal to be qualified in. So really, uh, if you want to become a pro in Harson, that's the, that's the way you want to do it. Qualify for a big event, and even better if you pull take it away. There. Yeah, you take yeah. away the win, and you're gonna get yourself a like a, you're gonna get a standing place and standing spot. And with the amount of 
effervescence, I guess, around the building of teams right now, it's probably the best time to try to go pro. Um, it wasn't, yep. like, it was pretty good before, but I think now is like teams are recruiting pretty heavily. There's always, there's even new teams coming up um, as a result of their attempts at getting new sponsorships on the, on board, and it's easier than ever to get that off, especially with the you know the publicity that Blizzard gives to BlizzCon sanctioned tournaments. Yep. So sponsors really enjoy it. So that's a really nice time if you want to get into pro. Uh, well, the, pro scene of Hearthstone. the whole Hearthstone scene and the esports scene is so de developing so fast. It's like crazy. Really, it's actually just insane. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, they, like the growth is just basically. I didn't see that kind of growth in any uh, any kind of business which is not internet re related. You know, because internet yeah. is like it's like um. I don't know the English word for it, but it's like way faster than real life stuff. Yeah, it's way fa things happen much faster as a result of the way the communications are made. But yeah, uh, it tends to just happen much quicker. And Hearthstone has grown really quickly. I wonder how taken aback Blizzard is by this growth. I mean, they've obviously taken things into their hands. Um, you know, organizing tournaments, trying to get a format going, trying to establish some kind of communication between the players, you know, the pro players and their own esports. They didn't even have an esports team initially for Hearthstone, but that had to grow. Um, so I'm curious to see in the next few years where the whole scene will go. So that being said, back to the game at hand, we'll have Show vs. Strive Crow. Show has brought Druid, Hunter, and Mage, and Strive Crow brought Warlock, Warrior, Druid. Uh, so they both are playing a Druid deck. Yeah. No surprise, to be honest. Well, in Bucharest, Druid was the third worst um, deck. It cost me the he semi-final. Like I because lost mid-range hunter, or no, no, I lost three times with mid-range Druid. I was 2-0 in the semi-final, and then I lost three times with mid-range Druid. So, so was... what decks really punished you? I mean, I'm imagining there must have been mid-range hunters somewhere because um... that's typically <clears throat> a pretty weak spot. I can't remember now. All right. Well, I would imagine there could be like mages. Typically, mages will, if they're built properly, will give you a, a run for your money. And most definitely, mid range hunter. I think that's a great, a yeah, great match. And I wouldn't be surprprised if Show brought mid range hunter as a result of expecting druid. If his hunter was mid range, I think I'd well, be if, fully... if he brings hunt, uh, mid range hunter, there's a great call against druid and warrior. Yeah, it's amazing at the moment, yeah. especially with Grim Patient Warrior having even less tools to handle big threats the way the mid range hunter pumps them out. True. And Strive Crow plays Warlock, so I would assume it's some kind well, mid range. Assume. He plays a lot of it, right? He, and he is known as a deck builder, so I would be not surprised if he comes up with something new, but Void Color re related. Yeah, exactly. Like, this type of deck he, he loves a lot. You, you can see him come up with multiple types. And in fact, I think Strive Crow is the only player um, in the pro scene that rates Warlock, like the, the three Warlock archetypes, Zoo, Handlock, and Demon Warlock, that he rates at the in the top five at the moment. He thinks those three archetypes are in the top five alongside really? Freeze Mage and Midrange Druid. So, I mean, that just seems to me like the, the deck he's going to bring. I think he might bring Patron Warrior instead of Control Warrior since he prefers that one. Um, from an objective power standpoint, at least recently, that's mm -hmm. what he said. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that still holds true, but we'll have to see whether or not he does bring it. I wouldn't be surprised. He brought Mill Rogue at some point, so... Yeah, that's right. A anything goes. <laughs> anything. And you know what? Even if he loses, he could just go to, you know, in, in the third place. So it's maybe not... Um, but he still, doesn't necessarily the pressure of getting the absolute best match. Yeah, I'd still Strap who wants to win. It's like being the of first course. in the group is basically yeah. having... Another win, prestige. like winning, no, 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 it's even not that, but I mean, it is prestige, prestigious, but if he wins this match, it's like additional win. It's like you yeah. win two matches at once. Exactly, because you don't because have to go through the yeah. quarterfinals. Yeah, exactly. And you avoid a really, a really consistent player from the second group. Yep. So by dodging that, you're effectively, it's crazy the value of this last match, actually. It's unreal. Like the value mm -hmm. those two mm -hmm. players, are, like either of these players are going to get from the win is going to be astronomical because the variance in Hearthstone makes it so that you eventually, when it comes to high level play, it comes down to small edges that you can get. If you can get a free win on top of other players, then that is just massive. Yeah, I agree. It's just crazy. Like dodging the, the coin flips is just insane. All right, so the first match is going to be Strive Crow's Druid versus Show's Mage. Show plays a lot of Freeze Mage, but I don't know if he'll switch up his hand here. I wonder if he will. 
I know he still thinks it's one of the best decks in the meta, though. No, it's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm yeah, still. Yeah, he, he definitely thinks that. I think th him and Thais actually agree on that, mm -mm. unless I'm mistaken. Thais yeah. didn't agree at all. Like he said sometimes at the, some time ago that Druid is really bad in current meta game. But that no, was no, like... Freeze Mage. Oh, no, Freeze Mage. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Freeze Mage. Yeah, yeah. I was talking about Show's Freeze Mage. I know, like Show plays Freeze Mage, and I think Thais agrees with him on that specific point. But yeah, sorry, I misunderstood. No, nah, no problem. No issue. Yeah, I'm just uh. Druid versus Freeze Mage is still an okay matchup either way. Generally speaking, Druid can pack... Like, if they get a good Keeper of the Grove on a Doomsayer, and they don't get... You know, the Mage doesn't get follow-up Freezes, that's generally game. A good Lothab, well-timed. Um, yeah, a Lothab bad Emperor and Combo. For the yeah. yeah. Those that's are awesome. really important cards. True. Alright, the players should be getting ready at the moment. Should be getting into the game fast. So... Do you think we'll see any more flame, like any flame wakers in the near future? Perhaps the next, uh, with the next week, uh, like six of them have one deck with KT. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, but like in an actual, in an actual non gimmick <laughs> uh, situation, I wonder because I know it's a really like good card on ladder, but I wonder for tournament play, why we haven't seen any of it. It seems like Zoo is still better than the equivalent, you know, aggro tempo for Mage. Well, the problem with uh, flame walker against Zoo is the fact that. Imp gain boss is kind of countering the flame wave. Yeah, you spawn more imps and that doesn't really yeah. help you. All right, well, apparently Sho did not bring Freeze Mage. He decided to go full on Mech Mage. Now, there may be Flame Wakers in there. I just said that, but there might be some. And Strife Crow could make the mistake of maybe mulliganing against Freeze. You think Probably so? The difference that might do. Well, Sho does play a lot of Freeze. I don't think there's any difference. Yeah, I think your mulligan is pretty much equivalent, right? Yeah, you, you mulligan everything away anyway. Although you don't keep wrath, but in this specific case, it wouldn't make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Oh, he kept the keeper. And what's really interesting, though, is um, the strength of Freeze Mage, uh, of Mech Mage versus Druid, comes sometimes from your entity being able to give you a huge tempo play. Um, better yet, if you get it from Mad Scientist, but still, even as a standalone cast, it's amazing. And Sho finds two snow chuggers. Hmm. And now Strife Crow is going to be forced to find the Wrath, right? Yeah, kinda. With all the Wrath, he is screwed. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. He can be just blown away. Yeah, Do you think this... he will um, hero power into the Mech Warper to play Savage Roar next turn? I, I think he must be at least considering it. It makes too much. Like the threat of. Not being able to even kill a single minion would be way too big. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right, so that's a good sense. call. Definitely a good call here from Strife Crow. But he's going to be bummed out when he sees a double chugga chugga wow, come out. Wow, this is so bad. This is so bad. Well, if you think about it, though, Strife Crow's going to be able to handle this 2-2. Two -two. The problem is the Mirror Entity follow-up. The show goes for that instead of the Tinker Mirror Town. Entity? I think I oh, will just play in Tinker Town. Yes. Really? Okay. Yeah. I would favor the Tinkertown, uh, because, well... I figure the only like, way you lose is if he gets anything good on the board. As as the mage in this position, I think the only way you lose is if he gets something on the board that really puts a, puts a dent in your ability to, to keep pushing, but... We'll see if Show agrees with you or me. I think he'll just go Tinkertown, like, as you said, but I'm a little... I would have done the uh, the other play myself. Habits. This one is a bit more aggressive, though. I think it makes a lot more sense in this position. You're it totally is more right. aggressive. And you're you're also... totally right, and it's so it's so strong. Like you still have good follow ups afterwards. Yeah, and then you can play mirror entity plus uh, the part next turn, or yeah. and if you play the mirror entity next turn, you, then you force your opponent to use a uh, lower impact minion, right? On turn yeah, five. Yeah, just to negate your. So your you, you're off cure when you use a keeper on turn five, an example. Yeah. No, you're right. It does make a lot more sense. I'm just. Or maybe now an Antron Mad Scientist, and that's that's even way better. I think shows just got the perfect follow-ups, back-to-back plays. Like Mech Warper, no answer from Strife Crow. This is not looking good at all for Strife Crow. And the Mad Scientist will bring out a Mirror Entity for free. At least it's not there yet. This is not looking amazing. Well, um, I think it just plays Belcher here. Yep, but, uh, there's one fireball already in Sho's hands. 
I don't think you played Drew the Claw with Fireball possibly around the corner. Oh, why not Belcher? Does it doesn't mean that is. Yeah, well, it's from defensive stance position. When you play Belcher first, I think Belcher is slightly more defensive, but yeah, it is. But then you can use the Druid of the Claw as a charge minion also. So you have always more options. Belcher is always the same, right? Yeah. So yeah, I would that's favor... what I'm thinking, but I'm wondering and it's... why not. And it's uh, it's resisting the fireball also. Oh, Meritity was top deck. Shows not gonna be able to get a free Meritity off this, but he does get a pretty. Does he? Does he just have lethal here? Fireball and then turn around one snow chugger. Two, six, eight, ten, eleven. No, that's one off. Yeah, it's one off. I think that you still go like full on phase. You can even keep the switch in case he plays another taunt minion. Yeah. And then that'll lower its stack. Well, that was a blowout. That was fast as hell. Yeah, I mean... That's what but, Mech Mage does. When they do have a good start, there's really little you can do. Like, it's not even just a good start for the Mech Mage. It's the horrible start for the Druid as well. I think, I think that is a huge reason why this went south so quickly. Because the Mech Mage came out sort of normally as far as the tempo it had. But Strife Crow's answers were just not there. Wow. No Wrath, no Innervates, just nothing. Yeah, well, the the wild growth is not even so important. The innovate is even more important in this matchup. Yeah, you just need the instant um, board control. Like, yeah, one hit, just a mm -hmm. single hit, single mm -hmm. minion on the board to contest possibly two of those the, from the mage. Getting a five drop on turn three will buy you two turns on average, at the very least. So True. that's what you need to get. Just contest the tempo, but that just wasn't possible. So Strife Crow's down one game here. Show going up one over this mech mage, which is locked. He's got Druid and Hunter on the back end. Strife Crow's got his entire lineup. Warlock, Warrior, Druid. Is Show going to go for the Druid now? And mm. secure a win with it, and then try to go Hunter versus Warrior or Warlock. Or even I Druid, think... in fact. Uh, well, Hunter Mage. I'd uh, probably try I'd... Druid, mm. but... I think Hunter's almost a guaranteed win against Strikeforce lineup at some point. So you could keep it for the last... Hunter against Warrior is kinda... It, it, well, it I... all depends what kind yeah. of Hunter it is. Um, so I would say... Is it if is it the even tiebreaker is so important against those two? Like there's no difference. Well, there's no yes because if uh, if, if what's his name, Show wins. Uh, if Show wins, he's gonna because of the current tiebreaker, he's gonna be over the tiebreaker of Strife Crow. Whereas if he had a lower one, he would just take far bad spot. So now he's gonna go from three to first as opposed to three to two. So no, it's no, a really no, no, big no. deal. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Strike Crow has plus six and Show has plus six. So yeah. if yeah. he wins, he always will be at first, first place. place. Yeah. No matter right. what. So well, yeah, that's it. So Diebreaker doesn't really matter. So you can just play whatever deck you want. Yep. Because exactly. Firebat has plus three. So if Show wins the whole game, then it doesn't really make any difference also because at plus four he already surpasses Firebat. So whatever deck you pick here makes really it's no fine. difference. Exactly. Yeah. So he can play it in the order he wants, but I think, um, just I, I think his hunter is gonna get a really good. If it's mid range, obviously, right? If it's face hunter, I think it's suddenly a little weaker, um, but it could steal games away from unprepared decks or bad starts from Strife mm -hmm. Pro, That's always possible. But generally speaking, I think mid range has a really, really good line, uh, a really good chance against Strife Pro's entire lineup. So it's gonna be pretty crazy. Well, we're about to go in. Apparently, Strife Crow is going to be playing as Warrior, and I'm hoping for a Grim Patron or Warrior. It's one of the decks that... It's actually one of the hardest decks to play. I don't know if you've played it yourself, Lothar. Excuse me, can you repeat? Have you played a lot of Patron Warrior? No, not, not at all. It's actually really difficult to play. Yeah, it is difficult, and to be honest, I think still Contra Warrior is kind of better, I would say. It, it like... In overall, it has more weak spots than the Patron Warrior, but also yeah. has better matchups against some decks. It has, like, so, it's, it's a little bit more lopsided in a lot of circumstances, yeah, it's especially more when polarized. it comes to rogues, let's say. Yeah. Uh, it's, rogues, it's, I think, is a perfect example of that. Rogue, Freeze Mage, uh, Face Hunter. Yeah. You beat, you have like a 70 30 against three decks. So I would favor Contra Warrior um, over the Patron Warrior. Well, Strife Crow's hand could indicate a tweaked control warrior or just a straight up patron. Based on the slam and the frothing, I'm tempted to say patron, but it's not necessarily true. Like, uh, there's I'll... been a lot of adaptations yeah. to control warrior nowadays. 
I, 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 I'm guessing that's that's the case. That's the Petron Warrior deck. Yeah, it does look like it just from the starting hand, but we'll have to see. He does find two uh, Fraudings. That's a pretty good uh, minion heavy start. Hmm. So you pass and play Frauding in turn two. Either you coin out Fire War Axe, then slam another minion so you can kill two things on turn two. Could that be a play? You get the axe out now and then you just slam next turn. Hmm. No, I would favor the minion in turn two. Because that. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> well, Scrapper might be better than me then. I think he's just got, he just wants to make sure that he gets as many minions out of the board as possible, as fast as possible. Because once the warrior gets a single minion lead on you, you're dead. Okay, then, yeah, I mean, once the hunter sense. gets yeah. a single minion on you, then you just take four damage a turn. But now, at the very least. Does, we'll just play Hunter's Creeper. And attack anyway. Hmm. He's, he's not, not attacking. Biding his time, it seems. Wow, Strive Crow really wants a Whirlwind right now. Show played into that Whirlwind really hard though, if it had been there. True. Uh, well... Hmm. I mean, if there was a Whirlwind, this would be amazing for Strive Crow, but... There's just nothing. I don't... I'm not sure what to do here. Like, makes no sense, right? Slamming this and attacking one of the spiders makes no sense. I don't think so, no. I think it's all going to come down to some AoE effect that's going to break the game for, in favor of Stripe Crow. Um, you can play Frothing next turn and attack the third minion that comes down, because there will be a third one. Because... I really wonder if he plays Armor Smith. And he goes face with the weapon. Yeah. So he wants to override the death by calculating about two turns ahead how often he'll be able to pop the Creeper before that uh, that turn comes up. In a way, I'd have to say Patron Warrior reminds me of Freeze Mage because it has to plan so far ahead what to get would, anything done. Would you play Snake Trap here? You know, I don't know he didn't no... attack my minion. I don't think. I don't know that he would suddenly. Yeah, maybe you're right. I think I would have either hero powered or played a two drop, like uh, a mad scientist. I don't really know about the Snake Trap. Well, Strife Crow gets the frothing out, so that's going to be a little helpful to contest the board. It doesn't matter if it gets silenced, so this owl is utterly useless. Well, there's, there's no Belchers, only Alma Smiths can be an is issue here. Oh, wow. This is not going to be fun for Strife Crow. If Show goes for the Kill Command Lepernome, the amount of damage output that could happen over the next few turns is just disgustingly high. And he will do it. No wonder. Well, Strife Crow wants to find a whirlwind. I mean, he's got the death by, so he can pop that spider very easily. He's gonna get low on health somewhat, oh, around the 15 whirlwind. or so. Yeah, a bit late, unfortunately, but. Yeah, but do you. I you have to ask. Yeah, Death Spite and ask the question to the um, Mad Scientist. Yeah, do you wanna die? I think that's the play. And then you can pop the spiders. Since it spawned first, the death battle is going to resolve first. It's going to spawn two one ones before the axe does. That should work out. Shouldn't be too bad. Well, well, well. What? Well, uh, is there any other option? I don't think so. You played the death fight. This turn. You have to activate it next turn and play the Frothing Berserker and armor up or slam. He's gonna go for the slam whirlwind play to reduce as much damage out of the board mm. as possible. I don't He's know. He's gonna if execute I like the this. mad scientist. That's a complete board wipe. And then he can follow up with the weapon on the following turn. That's well, a pretty solid stand, like line of play. The problem is obviously you're gonna be vulnerable to charge minions right now because you're gonna have to smash yourself into them, but you already were. So, I don't think it changes much from your perspective. Yeah, maybe you're right. So, Explosive Trap and Snake Trap are both up. And I, I think Strive Crow has a really good chance of stabilizing here. A really good chance. And we'll I mean, this is, this is almost perfect. So, I think you go face to trigger Explosive, and then you trigger Snake on the following turn. 
it, it you might think it's perfect but the problem is you have no health gain and you're almost at the i don't know man look at the amount oh. of verse he's got going on here this is just crazy he's got warsong commander with frothing on a snake trap board this is just insane Oh, right. wonder if snakes uh, will buff uh, frozen. Yeah, the frothing, even beyond what it's at right now. So that's very true. Wow. I mean, he doesn't even he doesn't even have to trigger the, the snakes if he doesn't feel like it. But you have to play the wolf rider right now. No, I think you know he's Why trying not? to set up a really sick death bite. Oh, nice card here for Strive Crow. No, I would have played the, the wolf rider definitely. Just to get the three damage in. Yeah, four just to get. Just for to to play um to give it the free damage because you you still want to use every single card you would draw right so why would you and if, and and play the uh, hero power so why would you keep a wolf rider that is the more ex most expensive card in your deck makes no sense I think in this case it would have died anyway yeah I know so but... I guess it wouldn't have changed anything but the odds that you see a second frothing at this point is pretty low so I think maybe you're right on this line of play. Well, the show's gonna have to silence that frothing like no tomorrow. I wouldn't do that either. If you want to win this match, you have to Whoa. deal face damage and just ignore well, the Well, you're dead situation. if you don't. Well, okay, I guess. No, you, you, you wouldn't, wouldn't be, be dead. dead. But... Yeah. And now, look at this. You can play the Leper Gnome because you have to use Leper Gnome, so you effectively lose two damage, so he will be at five. So you could have won if you have kept the Owl and get a Kill Command, second one. You know, I, love, I never looked at it that way, but that Sludge Belcher actually can attack right away. It's one of the yeah. things about it. I hadn't really considered that. Like, you can be proactive about the way you use it. Usually, you just let it sit there and eat up a few hits. Well, I think Strive Crow's well on his way to take the game here, unless Show Top Deck some kind of miracle. Nope. Yeah, that's not it. So even if you top deck, but okay, quick shot. Look at this card draw here with you battle need to rage. Yeah. Battle rage on four cards looks like. Actually, wait, is that lethal if you play both dread corsairs? That's nine. No, that's uh. Actually, yeah, it is exact lethal. Six yeah. nine. Yeah, that's thirteen. Both dreads will seal the game here for Strife Crow. And Face Hunter looks... goes down to Grim Patron Warrior. At least we have to assume it's Grim Patron. I don't see anything else it could be. Yeah. It will be. Cards. If he would use the Battle Rage, he would still die to a top decked weapon. Yeah. Because it would trigger the uh, Pirates too. Power yeah, exactly. All right. Well, that's going to be uh, an equalization here from Strife Crow winning with Grim Patron Warrior versus the Face Hunter from Sho. A little surprised mm -hmm. Sho's bringing Face Hunter, but I guess uh, he values it over mid range at the moment. Which, I think recently with the advent of, you know, Druid has risen a lot. Like, it's become... It came back. You know, it kind of disappeared for about a mm -hmm. week and a half from the metagame, if not two weeks. And now it's really back in force. And I feel like Temple Mage and Midrange Hunter have, as a result, gained in power. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. But um, it's kind of sad for sure that he didn't win the favorable matchup against a Warrior. I mean, more favorable than Contra Warrior with the Hunter, with the Face Hunter. I mean, the, you're, you're playing two whirlwinds, the axes are there, you got more minions for the early game. I don't know how much more favorable it really is. Well, but there's a little to none life gain from the yeah, Patron Warrior. And right. if you just get damage from once, if you could just get damage once from your minion, you're so happy. Because yeah. most of the time you will kill uh, the opponent anyway. It's never, like, that damage is never getting healed back up. There's no Shield Maiden yep. or Shield Block going to come yeah, out. To, to there can you. only be armor moves. Yeah. All right, well, Show is going to be playing as Hunter again up against Strife Crow's Warlock. So it's going to be the third game of this series, one to one at the moment. Strife Crow's Warlock is probably, actually, it could be anything. I know he thinks the three Warlock archetypes are near the top of the meta. At least he did about a week ago. I'm not sure if anything changed, but against a Hunter, I'd say that's a pretty rough matchup, no matter what. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even Zoo doesn't play Flame Imps anymore because of Face Hunter. <laughs> well, it um. The problem, the most important card in the zoo is Defender of Argus. If, if both Defender of Argus will be drawn by the zoo player, he will most likely win against the face hunter. Because that plus one health is so important and it just 
soak so much damage. Yeah. All right. Well, we see a flame imp in Stripeco's hand. I'm gonna have to say it's something of a zoo deck at the very least. Something of a zoo deck. I don't see what else. Uh, I guess a good Z play and more of a mid range deck. Now you keep the flame imp, I think. Anyway. It kind of sucks against Lepernome openers, and you're like, you know, it's Face Hunter. It's just that you have to, you know, have something for the early game um, to trade. And that is a oh. good follow up. That wow. Void Walker is heaven sent. Yep. For Strife Crow. It's really important. And the Bane of Doom is also important because it can spawn a. Everything. What's his name? <laughs> What's his name? Alganis. You got no, the Felguard. The Demon got... Sengen. Yeah, the Felguard. Yeah, the Felguard, exactly. There's like a few minions that you can get from this that are going to make your life a lot easier. And Strife Crow is going to be able to put on the pressure over Sho here. Sho's got no answer to the Void Walker unless he smacks himself a 3 drop with the coin into this because he oh. hasn't found a bow. But then leaves the Hounds. It's really important. This is one of the most crucial cards you can get as a face hunter against Zoo. Now we have to ask the question, what does Strike Roll do with his attacks? Does he just go face or does he trade and pop the spider before he attacks? Like I what, think you have to attack here. Just full face and try to race? Mm -hmm. If there would be a weapon, it would have been played already and cleared the board. And um, so you can only assume a bit of Sergeants and Arkham Golems Wolf Riders. Yeah, three drops that aren't going to be more than a one for one. Double okay. kill command. Okay. That's that's rough. Actually, unleash. How good is unleash here? I think you wolf rider the void walker. And kill the flame and go face with the hunted creeper. And it's it's not looking grim anymore for Well, so. finds a curve. Well, Show's Show's hand is pretty good for damage output, but I have to say Strife Crow's hand is probably as strong. So if if I have to say, to like, that Bane of the... Doom is going to be sick. Yeah, but if if uh, Striker opts for the implosion now, and then Show will draw a Knife Juggler, this will be disastrous. I don't think Striker will implosion here. I would be surprised if he did. But then again... Then again, I'm not playing the game, right? Yeah. <laughs> Like, I always say stuff, but then it comes out to be something different. Because we have the full information. I still feel like Void Caller as yeah, a pressure tool is much, much better. Yeah, yeah Most of the time. Right. But he kills the spider. Alright, maybe he's he afraid of a the kill beast pass. and gets the 1-1 one -one for free. Oh, that's nice. So, if you get a hopper... Does it change anything? Not really. I, I think this is the point where Sho just wants to rush face. Like, I think this is almost it, if not it. At oh, the look at Hopper. Well, you can't kill the Void Color. Like no, you, you can't do that. It's too yeah. risky. What if you pop something out that's even worse than what you've got already? So what about killing the 1-1 one, one Imp? You sacrifice one point of damage? Yeah, coin out hero power and go face. That's what I do here, if I'm sure. Yeah, he does exactly that. I think his lines of play are all limited to pure damage output and hope for the best. But Strifeco is going to get a really good Bane of Doom here. And when I say really good, I mean it. Like, it kills yeah. a Huffer, and he's going to get a Demon on the top on top of it. And let's see what he finds. Well, the Demon Roulette. Alganis is possible. And it's oh, the of Bane, which is that's really, good. really great. Yeah. Yeah, get some health back. And now Show's plan to go full face is gonna be... And with the Abusive Sergeant, it gets three points of health back. Oh man, a free life tap. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Full face engaged. Oh, look at that Imp Gang boss being knifed. Bang! Put, put the sample <laughs> on your face. So, does Unleash the Hounds change nope. the number of hounds you spawn in the middle of the animation? <laughs> like, you just spawn an additional... Oh. Game, so you just keep spawning more. Double knives to the imp gang boss. I did not change the number, but then again, I think Show's damage output is becoming very, very dangerous. Strifeco is going to have to pull off a really good uh, abusive play on that Mistress of Pain. Oh, wow. So, never mind me. Defend of Argus on 
the imp- uh, the mistress and then abuse the surgeon on the mistress go face trade yeah. two of your imps for the nav juggler and go face with void color what if you just trade three imps for the the things then you defend of argus your mistress you kill the juggler with your void color and abuse of your mistress there's like 17 ways you can play this turn but i like yours a bit better I think you have to just ignore the hounds, you know? Oh, wait, yeah, that's way better, never mind. Yeah, what yeah, would you think of that? Yeah, that's way better. Yeah, that's what you want to do, at least. I think you have to trade your imps away so you can buff both of those and get even more health out of the uh, mistress. You get, like, four health, and the void caller is also a bit bigger. Now shows, like, SM Orc doesn't work anymore. Yep, and he healed and all smork. damage. Insane value. Whoa. Double kill command on minions. Is uh, nightmare real? Uh, you have to use it. You, you, you have to. There's no other way. If you don't kill the Mistress of Pain, you lose. That, yeah. that, it's just that simple. Yeah. It's, it's like, and you can't even allow it to kill one of your things. Yeah, because it heals, heals damage more. and heals, heals too. So it's, you have to uh, use the one kill command on the Mistress of Pain and probably the second out. one on the Void Caller. Which sucks because if there's a Melganis, you basically lose anyway. But that's a risk you have to take. Like you, you have to kill it anyway, or otherwise you count on top decking an owl. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't count on that. Not at this point. Maybe yeah. a, a two, maybe a turn or two ago it would have been viable, but right now there's no way you can do that. That Mistress of Pain was surprisingly important for Strive Crow. Uh, but I he guess any be minion would have been okay. No, no, no. But he would be a ten life, so he would. Be, he would be all, almost be dead right now. Yeah, one turn away from death. With a, you know, kill command play into hero power. Oh, four. Yeah, now Show is gonna hope for that unleash play, because, I mean, the Strive Troll still doesn't have lethal. Finally unleash the Hound here, and you're gonna... Oh, the explosive trap. That's also nice. That, also nice. I mean, Strive Troll can't life tap anymore. Explosive well... trap by Show all the time in the world. Oh. You go Wolf Rider, Glaive Zuka, Hero Power? No. You play, You have to play the trap, I think, right? So trap, Hero Power? No, you have to attack with the Wolf Rider and the weapon this turn. Because... Well, go for everything. Dump your entire hand and don't Hero Power. Then you Hero Power next turn. Put your opponent on 8 life with Glaive Zuka wait, and wait, Wolf Rider. Wait. You deal 6 with the Wolf Rider and the Glaive Zuka. So... Yeah, he's now, just gonna like vomit his entire hand here and just go face. I think that's the most, I, I, like, the most, the highest pressure play that you can possibly make. And even if he trades an imp for the Wolf Rider, I guess you're still fine with it. Four, six, seven. And he can't risk having a weapon be stuck in his hand if he top decks another one. Like, he I only think he would die to... to a Doom Guard. So to be honest, I would favor the non-trap play this turn, because then you. You maximize your damage output by two, and you only top deck one card. I was gonna ask, do you ever pop the spider? But apparently not. There's well, that's there. convenient. So he's actually able to make like the two spiders that pop out become two twos. Yep. That is a huge deal for Strive Pro. He can even just buff up the defender and the spider itself if he wants to. As I said before, second defender of August most likely seals the deal for. Wow. Um, yeah, for the. For the. Um, oh god, for for the warlock. Well, this is probably one, the best top deck Strive Pro could have had. I can't think of another target that would have been nearly as good, right? Yeah. Now, what is Sho looking for? Second explosive Quick trap. Quick shot. Explosive trap number two. Um, unleash the hounds would almost cut it. But he'd live at the Look, very least. If he would use hero power last turn. Yeah. A top deck of um, Quick Shot would have been lethal now. Because he would use hero power. Explosive trap and quick shot, an example. Yeah, so explosive trigger is after even the doom guard is played, so he would have lived possibly. Yeah. Okay. Well, well that's a that that's sucks. a dead card. 
Yeah, he's dead on board actually with this hand. So show going uh, 2 with the uh, face hunter. Yeah, he's gonna be gracious and give his opponent the win. Well, well fought, I concede. That's uh, that's an unfortunate turn of events. Strife Crow's gonna be getting himself two wins up uh, over Show. Show's I wouldn't say tournament line is on the line because that's not true. He's still gonna be third place no matter what happens, uh, unless I'm mistaken. But his ability to get first place is just right around the corner if he doesn't win the next game it doesn't equalize the series he completely loses his chance at this true well it's still it's still a chance he still has uh, the face hunter against um druid yeah there's a druid left on strife crow's lineup this is the only deck left and i would have to say depending on what strife crow's deck is looking like that's a possible win but we saw earlier or i think it was perhaps even last week we saw druid of the flame um, being very, very effective against Agro Hunter. If that comes out early, you can get sometimes up to two minions, like up to three. Sometimes you get really lucky. Uh, and then if you combine that with inter Innervate plays, it just snowballs out of control. Yep. That's true. Yeah, it's not the most likely, but it's possible. It also, like, it's good down. It, it is um, up to the Innervate being sh uh, in the first hand or not. Is that, yeah. is Usually it's an Innervate it comes for a that. keeper or. Something else to, to like, you know, speed up the game with a Druid of the Claw, Belcher. And there's yeah, no Owl for the Hunter, then um, the Druid player has a huge advantage. Yep. It's all about getting the tempo back. Kind of like against Mech Mage, you have the same drawback where if you don't get the tempo back early through Innervate or you accelerate through Wild Growth, you're pretty much getting the game stolen away from you most of the time, even if you find a Wrath. Uh, even if you find the removal, the removal is too slow. To compensate for the amount of damage that's coming in immediately true and also which is important like in this kind of matchup you won't play your entire hand anyway so getting the innervate is kind of you know like playing an extra card yeah that you would otherwise would have yeah, never yeah. played yeah exactly so it doesn't really matter if you if the innervate is costing you a card because basically it adds your card yeah like in this matchup basically the card advantage doesn't really matter for the defending player like, it just doesn't matter at all, because you're trying to just scramble to play the best thing you can every turn while you're getting rushed down. So, Innervate just acts as a tempo play rather than a card advantage play. But you do see Innervate backfire in the case of mashups like Control Warrior, where you play a good Innervate play, they just counter it with an Execute, and then you lost two cards for nothing. And mm -hmm. if you don't find mm -hmm. Ancient of Lore, you lose the game. So that tends to happen uh, very often against Control decks, and I, I think that's a, a di like an innervate dynamic that maybe not a lot of players uh, realize exists its value is very different depending on the matchup true that's a really important insight yeah but the thing is like it's still valuable no matter where you have it <laughs> but the way you play <laughs> it in every matchup is always a bit different like it's always good effectively but sometimes it's better than good yep all right so we should be heading into the next game. I wonder if Strife Crow brings Fast Druid or more of a Taunt one. I don't think I saw him ever play something without Force of Nature and Savage Roar. Yeah, me neither. I'm just curious to see if maybe uh, it'll be a switch of gears. He favors the fast, the mid-range Druid rather more than anything else. Um, I like, think Dog is more of a ramp player, but even then, it's been a while since I've seen him really play that type of deck. More of a run player is also Gara and Stanislav Sivka. Gara is actually a really big ramp druid player. He plays a lot of it. Like most of the time when I see him play, it seems to be the case that his druid decks end up being ramp as opposed to something yeah. else. It still brings me memories when you think about Tin Tan, Angel of War, Innovate, Faceless. Faceless, oh yes. <laughs> oh my god. Or the Karen, you remember the old Karen Blood of Mark of the Wild? Oh, wow. like, you remember like yeah, a long time ago, yeah. if you had that against Zoo, you were like, okay, you know what, I'm stable. Nothing's, you know, getting me out of this. Um, no, man, the times. It's oh, changed. look, Wild Grove and Innervate Strive Crow has a Swipe. perfect hand. And a, a ref. Perfect wow. hand here. That's so Strive insane. Crow's hand is crazy. I would guess to Wild Grove now? Yeah, I think so too. There's no better time, and really, there's nothing for you to remove here. Yeah. I mean, there is, but it's hidden, so 
Oh, How do you remove that which you can't see? Them yolks. <laughs> hey, it's not. There's no egg on the board. You can't make that joke. <laughs> you know, I wonder if we'll see a dragon egg and ruby egg deck ever come out. Ever. Maybe one day. You know, in two years, there'll be enough eggs in the metagame that you can make an egg deck. Egg deck. Oh man, that'd be sick. <laughs> can you can you even imagine <laughs> the egg deck? Well, there was an egg deck in almost every single card game I know. I know, right? Which yeah. is why I want to know if Hearthstone is going to have one of those. Hunt Creeper, right? And you hit face for two. Yeah, then you get a free, well, a good juggle, possibly. Do you use the Glaive Zucker? No, you can actually keep it for now, because you won't play a weapon anyway next turn. You want to play a minion and, and hero power. You're at least two turns from a weapon play, even if you find one. Oh, look, Emperor. No this way. Is, this is sick. Show's gonna have to scramble to deal with this. He's gonna have to use... No, no way he uses Arcane Golem. Not when he just got mana reduction on everything. Wow. <laughs> no oh my god, Show. I, so I double, double Juggler seems pretty okay. Yeah, double Juggers, and then you go into the Emperor, and you have to hit twice. Which is like a 50-50. Yeah, but this is as good as it's gonna get for... Oh, it's even less than 50-50. Now we have to only kill, uh, hit it twice. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. all, the, all the knives in the right place. No so questions we'll asked. Just wipe you know. now and hero power. Yeah, it's a godlike play. Only enabled by the Emperor. It's the only reason it can be done at the this point. Emperor. By the power of Ragnaros, he has the power. You know, I didn't it get that reference. It sucks, right? Like what the does? reference, when it's twice using the same word, so it sounds but, weird. Yeah, I mean, apparently it's a reference to something, but like it's He-Man or something. I oh, have yeah, no yeah, idea yeah. what that yeah, is. Yeah, 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 that's, that's right, that's He-Man. I, I don't even know who that is, like that's how... I can quote in Polish, but you wouldn't understand that. No, probably not. Na moc posępnego What is he, What does that mean at all? It's like, does it mean by Ragnaros I have the power, or does it mean something else? I have the power. It's um, it's about the power, but it's uh, different than and that what uh, Emperor says. It's kind right, of. Alright, so yeah. I just want to like bring attention to what's going on here. Show is, like in theory, you'd say he's behind, but he still got his opponent on a really low health total. Really low. He's like a nine. <laughs> he's almost dead. Yeah. So now he has to play the scenarios and count the damage how he can kill his opponent next turn. Yeah, he has to finish the game off next turn, no questions asked here. Yeah, so if he plays scenarios and he has to unshade now, deal free damage. Yeah, scenarios for Triance, trade the 2 4 away, then go face. Because if he's played Drew the Claw or Sludge Belcher, they're both vulnerable to uh, spot removal. Like, mm -hmm. well, not even mm -hmm. spot removal, just Iron Beak. Just an owl, yeah. And then, so, uh, scenarios is way better than owl. But if you go free to face with Shade, then it's 26. And then for damage from Shade, of the next, uh, next time is next turn to 20, uh, 22. You kill the keeper. Uh, With Drew to the Claw, I think that could be lethal setup on turn 9. Wait, because what, of the what charge if you button. go face with the Keeper and just keep two of those three ends? Does it make any difference? No, it doesn't. No, I don't think it's a big difference because ultimately you'll be ending up trading as much damage output as Oh, wow. Get. Yeah, that's not at all what Show wants to see here. What a whiff. If he would um, not kill um, the Ark and Golem, then it would mean 4 damage to the face. Yep. I okay, think Strafford so takes the game here, this is it. 4, 6, the 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 20, 23, 25. 25. One off lethal. Oh, one off lethal here. Even with the hero power. Wait, wait, wait. No, with hero power he can, Yeah, exactly. He's got the hero power at 2 because of the reduction on Savage Roar from Emperor. That's gonna be exact mana lethal, I think. Yeah, that's right? exact, exactly 26, unless there's an Arkham Golem <laughs> killing the... You did not. Yo, wow. Show is gonna live to see another day. So now it's just Belcher and... Belcher and Druid of the Claw. Yeah, and I think that's it. That's it. And Show's gonna be scrambling for a kill command. 
to for five to face and then hero power, but I think Saracro will just innervate out hero power to be out of range of that. There's no yeah. way he can win. There's no way. I mean, Strife Crow does have to innervate hero power though. It's really important that he does. Yep. Because otherwise, uh, a sneaky kill command. Now, quick shot into kill command could be the game. And we saw quick shot in show starting hand. So, will we There's see no way this the unthinkable? No, we will not. All right. <laughs> Anticlimactic ending to the series, but show's uh, face hunter deck was a big weak point. I think he lost three matches back to back with it. Yep. Three matches, so, uh, 03 with face hunter. I bet that the chat loves this. <laughs> like SMR get punished. Where is face? No face. No minions. Show no SM stupid. Work. Show no stupid. So yep. I think this was admittedly a little bit of a disappointment for yeah. the hunter deck. Like face hunter, I get that it's a good deck and it's you know it's really strong actually. It's a great deck to play all around. But I feel like in the current meta game, mid range is probably able to compete with more decks in general and it punishes the same it punishes a lot of the same decks uh, just as much as other decks do like the only difference i guess is rogue could get a kick out of seeing more mid-range hunter whereas um you know face hunter is better against them than mid-range but ultimately mid-range works pretty well against warriors druids you'll do okay against mages just in the same way that you do right now perhaps even better since uh freeze mage has gotten a bit of a Consistency buff, I guess, with Emperor. Yeah. And important news. We have the second day, I mean, the last day of the group stage tomorrow at 6 p.m. C-A-E-S-T. And yep. um, that will be the tomorrow's matches. Let me look the schedule. Yeah, we have the, the basically schedule. the second day of the week. Instead of being on Thursday, like most of the season that we had is going to be on to like on Wednesday tomorrow. That's going to be the last day of the pre-playoffs. We're going to have six matches tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it, it is. Colento versus, versus Orange. Orange. Kaldi versus Amaz. Hyped versus Life Coach. Wow, this will be great. RDU yeah. versus Trump, and Brian Killer versus Gara. And as addition, because today Orange was sick, second match with Orange tomorrow against Dog. Yeah, so this should be a really action-packed day. I think a few, uh, like, I think Orange is out of the top five. Amaz is out of the top five. I think RDU might be, unless, um, so, I know, I think RDU could still get in the top five, but not in the top three. If uh, one of the players, like, tr if Doug, Doug loses. Trump, Colento, all those players yeah. could shuffle around and RDU could get himself a fourth win to maybe get um, a bit above Dog if his tiebreaker goes up, whereas Dogs could go down. So RDU could get back in the top five, but a lot of players are going to have their reinvitation, if not their tournament life, on the line. And for the playoffs, Life Coach is a huge favorite, and I think at this point it's almost guaranteed that he moves on to the... Actually, it is guaranteed that he moves yeah, on to the semifinals yeah, yeah. at the very least. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. And in the meantime, I just want to remind you that if you want to be uh, getting into casting in Hearthstone, you can send your VODs at esports at kingwin.net, and that should be... Uh, you know, a good opportunity for you to see if you want to get into that. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, and wait, the there's also on Thursday, Amaz team tournament, right? The BlackRock oh. team brawl. Oh, the 2v2! Right, yeah, yeah, so, right so, the so, 2v2 tournament. Yes! Yeah. So it's really right. an, an awesome week. Today, KPL, tomorrow, KPL, and on Thursday, we have the BlackRock team brawl at Amaz channel. Do you know if it happens after the new wing is fully released? What? The the Thursday tournament for Amaz brawl. Cause like the, the the whole wing releases on Thursday, right? The last wing with the volcanic Drake. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the tournament happens right after this or just before. I have no like, idea. That would change things probably uh, a little bit. That being said, um, we'll be back tomorrow, guys. Same time. We have six matches. It should be a long day, in fact. So until then, you guys uh, have a nice one and.